the boat on that one. Anyway. Hey. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and introduce our panelists. Um, we have with us today Ralph Young. Uh, Dr. Ralph Young is an expert in dissent and protest movements in the U.S. and runs a weekly teach-in series on the historical context of contemporary controversial issues. He has received the Fulbright Fellowship to teach dissent in America at the University of Rome and <clears throat> sorry, has led ser uh, seminars on dissent and protest movements at Charles University Prague and Tübingen University, Germany. Uh, recently, as scholar in residence at the Chautauqua Institution, he gave the keynote address in the Chautauqua Amphitheater on the ethics of dissent. Uh, he has also won six major teaching awards at Temple University, including the Lindback and Great Teacher Awards. So welcome, Ralph. Uh, we have here today with us Melissa Glenn. Melissa is an associate professor of practice at Temple University's Fox School of Business and has dedicated more than 25 years to practicing and studying business and interpersonal communication strategies. She comes from a predominantly female driven and female inspired family and continues to work to demonstrate and highlight the value of women leaders. She minored in technical writing to balance her liberal arts background and uses this dual professional experience to help her students explore diverse paths to becoming leaders. Uh, so welcome, Melissa. Um, we have with us today, Dr. Marta Bordignon. Uh, Dr. Bordignon holds an MA in International Relations from Luis Guido Carli University, Rome, and a PhD in International Law from Sapienza Universita di Roma, Italy. Uh, she is um, a business and human rights expert at the Interministerial Committee for Human Rights Italy. And in addition to teaching, she's the co-founder and president of the association Human Rights International Corner. Uh, so welcome, Dr. Bordignon. And last but not least, we have with us Dr. Francisca Schultz. Uh, Dr. Schultz holds an MA and PhD in Japanese studies from the University of Tübingen. Uh, Professor Schultz's key areas of expertise are Japanese-China relations, the interaction of political conflict and trade, political shocks, and Japan's trade disputes. Professor, Professor Schultz's research focuses on Sino-Japanese diplomatic and economic relations, the effects of political conflict on economic exchange, uh, Sino-Japanese historical issues, and the Senkaku Diaoyu, sorry, Diaoyu <laughs> dispute, as well as Japanese trade disputes with China and South Korea. So welcome, Dr. Schultz, and thank you to all of our panelists for being here with us today. Thank you for doing those introductions, Dana. And I do want to ask everybody to, who's here, everyone else who's here, if you could just introduce yourselves briefly. Um, you can either drop it in the chat or if you want to just, you know, say hello and tell us who you are and where you're zooming in from today, that would be great. All right, I'll jump in first. <laughs> um, Hi, I'm Sherry Hope Culver. So I'm at the Klein College of Media and Communication, and I'm in the Department of Media Studies and Production. I also run the center, direct the Center for Media and Information. <laughs> and the center has an ongoing relationship with UNESCO. And so I work with um, non-Temple universities, let's say, and, and other colleagues around the world around media literacy and information literacy and yeah, all of that. Wonderful, thank you so much. Carmelo, can we call on you? Yeah, hi, good morning. Buongiorno. <laughs> I'm Carmelo Galati. I'm in uh, CLA and co director of the Italian program here at Temple. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I think Italian says it. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Rob, I'm just going in the order of the way I see people on my screen. You're on mute. Rob, you're on mute. Yes, I'm an art historian at Temple University of Rome. Thank you. You're welcome. Alessandra. Good morning. My name is Alessandra Di Raterra, and I am an adjunct faculty with the piano department at Temple University. I am uh, an Italian and American pianist, and I am interested in uh, an international collaboration with the Rome campus. Wonderful, thank you so much. Leah, last but certainly not least. Hi everyone, good morning. My name's Leah Hetzel. I'm the Director of International Student Affairs on Temple's main campus. Um, you know, I'm interested in this program as, you know, looking at 
seeing how our students are taking part, but I'm also an adjunct in the College of Ed. And so I'm you know, interested to see if it could be something useful as well. So, so excited to be here. Thanks everyone. And I'm keeping my camera off as I'm kind of morning multitasking over here, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> certainly excited to hear. Wonderful, thank you so much. And thanks to everyone for being here. Um, so during our session today, we are going to um, have each faculty member briefly share their experience of implementing a guest lecture or student discussion through Global Connect. Um, we'll strategize how to make use of invited guest lectures and student discussions in our classrooms across disciplines, I hope. Um, one thing to note with collaborating with our campuses, we sometimes may find a one-to-one -one correlation with the subject we're teaching, and sometimes we may not. So I really hope that people will be thinking kind of across disciplines, and I know Melissa's going to share a little bit about her um, experience so far with that. Um, and we'll review the Temple Global Connect site, and I, I will hope to ask for you um, for your feedback on the, that program as well. So the first thing I want to do is just ask faculty, um, and we'll go in turn, I'll just sort of call on um, each of you to share um, what led you to become involved in the Temple Global Connect program. And for those of you who are setting a precedent and talk about um, it, your experience with that, as well as um, new connections that you made from the program, um, and how did you use that connection to support your teaching or class planning? So I'm gonna go to Ralph Young first because I know he has a class coming up pretty soon and won't be able to stay with us for the whole session. Yeah, hi, hello everybody. Well, you know, I didn't, didn't really seek out ways to make connections because it's always been in my consciousness ever since I lived in Europe throughout the 1970s. You know, I feel we live in a global world and it's just natural to seek involvement in that. Uh, when I taught at Temple Rome in the fall semester of 2019, I came up with the idea of introducing the teachings there that I've been organizing on main campus. Uh, and I thought this went over quite well. We had about six or seven teachings while I was there. Uh, when I was back in Philadelphia for the spring 2020 semester, uh, and then the pandemic broke out, forcing us all online. Uh, Mary Conran at 10 Temple Rome sent out an email asking for main campus instructors to invite uh, Temple Rome instructors to do a class presentation to, because I guess they weren't meeting in, at Rome that, uh, that semester when the pandemic first broke out. Um, well, I know many professors at Temple Rome, so it was easy for me to get in touch with uh, Diego Pagliarulo uh, to give a couple of guest lectures in my global terrorism class. Uh, and then in the fall 2020 and spring 2021, even though I'm actually now back in person on campus, uh, I'm continuing to use Diego as doing guest lectures in my, in my global terrorism class via Zoom. And the students really love that. You know, suddenly have this person up on the screen on the wall talking to them from Rome and telling a little bit about what, what's going on there at the moment and then giving a lecture. Uh, also, for the past three semesters, you know, I've moved all the teachings online and it has really uh, been the silver lining of the pandemic because it's opened up the teachings to the world and people have been connecting not only from main campus in Temple Rome and Temple Japan, uh, but I've also had some of the teachings originating from the other campuses. You know, and um, uh, for example, uh, Sarah Jean Rosito just led a teaching on November 4th from Temple Japan and about her experiences being an, an expatriate in Japan. Um, I've also, uh, and, and of course, a really good example is some of our co-panelist here today, Marta Bordagnon, who together with Lorenzo Ranelli and Sarah Prestiani uh, presented a teaching from Rome and Brussels. Of course, Sarah Prestiani was in Brussels and, and Lorenzo and Marta were in Rome uh, on the uh, immigration crisis in Europe, you know, along the Balkan route, con contemporary migrants' trajectories cut across old and new war scars was the title. And it was a really very interesting conversation to be had. 
Um, Ralph, can I interrupt you for one second? Sherry Hope Culver is asking you to explain what a teach-in is. Would you mind just giving a little definition of that for us? Uh, okay. Well, uh, uh, Temple Campus starting in, actually starting in 2002, just before we invaded Iraq, my students in my Descent in America class, we got really talking about the historical backgrounds of the contemporary issues that were going on then. And um, what happened, it was just a bizarre thing in the, uh, the Descent in America class, students would hang around every day after class for up to a half an hour, 45 minutes, talking about what we had what we've been talking about in the class and applying to the present moment. And after a while I said, well, look, why don't we open up these discussions on Fridays and invite anybody from the Temple campus? And they started growing from there. Uh, when the semester was over, we decided to keep the teachings running, even though all the, the class was over and the students that were in that class, you know, helped me organize them. And it's become a phenomenon every Friday afternoon since September 2002. We've had these teachings. We're up to almost 400 teachings now. I've kept track of all of them. And uh, so then when I was at Temple Rome, I thought, I've got to introduce these, you know, to Temple Rome. And then when the pandemic hit, then it was just logical to move them online. And uh, so, they, they're a little bit different now because at the beginning, the first couple of years, it was really just a discussion going on amongst all the students. And now more and more we have somebody come and present a specific topic, like you know, when Marta did the one on uh, uh, European migration problems. And um, so we just had, for example, just this past Friday, we had one on anti-Semitism led by Lila Corwin Berman here at Temple. And she brought in panelists from Berkeley and the University of Charleston in South Carolina. So um, it just seems, you know, I think all of us prefer in-person teaching. and We like to be in class with students and see people's faces. But, you know, we can make the best of a, a bad situation by you know, employing this technology to connect the campuses and not only uh, connecting, let's, you know, Temple Rome and Temple Japan, but also scholars and students from other universities around the world. Like I, have, I do have connections at Tübingen and at Charles University and also in Ireland and a few other places you know, London School of Economics, I have a, a friend who has attended some of the teachings from there. So uh, it's just a, a great way to underscore that we are living in a global world and that if we're good educators, we have to make sure that students are aware of all of that. Even though I teach American history, American history really is involved with everything else in the world, you know, just, you know, so, so it's, it's not really possible, I think, to study any nation in isolation from, from the others. So I think this is a great idea and that we should just keep it going as much as possible. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ralph. And thanks for setting such a, a great precedent for all of us to follow and for us to build on with this program. We really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to go to Marta next, since you were already talking about your collaboration. And Marta, if you can um, talk about your involvement um, with these collaborations and, and how you've used it to uh, support teaching in your class, that would be great. Yeah, thank you so much, Suzanne, and uh, welcome to everybody to, to this event. Uh, and greetings from Rome, from a, a sunny Rome, actually. Uh, so yeah, Ralph already said a lot about our collaboration, but uh, actually there is even online Francisca and my experience with the global uh, teach uh, was even with the uh, Temple you know, University of Japan uh, campus, and it was definitely great. So um, apparently the first experience we had together with the other 
uh, political science faculty at, at TUR at Temple Rome, uh, Lorenzo with Ralph with the teachings um, he mentioned. Uh, actually, uh, I started this collaboration with Francisca uh, in fall 2020. Uh, so definitely during pandemic um, period. And it was great because when we were actually uh, not allowed to go out so much and uh, for sure not to teaching in class in person, uh, it was definitely an added value. Uh, I hope, I mean, for Francisca course to have my participation there, but it was great even for me because uh, uh, during spring 2021, as we had even the, the chance to have a live session with her students. Uh, so this is definitely an added value to, I mean, to all the courses because uh, you can reach out to uh, students that are not, I mean, your usual students. So uh, maybe they have different backgrounds and they may even like add something to your, uh, even to your academic uh, experience. So my experience was great because with Ralph for sure, but uh, in that case, we had the chance to be uh, together for a while and just to organize everything in person in Rome. Uh, whilst with Francisca, actually we never met in, in person, uh, but, but it was, you know, like with someone very familiar to you. So we were very uh, able to organize without not so much trouble uh, this kind of uh, online conversation and uh, remotely conversation with our students. So the first one was an asynchronous class, but that's, uh, the second one was in part a synchronous class. So we got uh, to organize a class uh, according to the time zones of Rome and, and Tokyo. Uh, and it was great. For me, it was a great experience. Uh, and this is something that I, I really and warmly suggest to everybody, even to my uh, colleagues here in Rome, but even to everybody in all the three campuses, because it's definitely something that uh, may be a challenge for, for, for some aspects, I mean, uh, but it's, it's definitely uh, a way even for improving uh, uh, our academic uh, uh, experience, I mean, as faculty, as professors. So we had this great chance to have three continents in, in Temple University and these great connections uh, among the three continents. So, I mean, that's, uh, I guess, um, it's the, the best way we may uh, use it, I mean, just organizing this kind of collaborations. Uh, so this was my experience. I mean, as I told you, a different ones, uh, because with Francisca, we just got the chance to, to be online, uh, but it was great. Even because um, with Francisca class, uh, I address a topic that is my main research activity topic that is about business and human rights, uh, as Dina uh, mentioned in my presentation. Uh, and uh, I don't have so far a course about that in, in Rome. We hopefully uh, have one starting from January, from spring 2022. Uh, but at that time we had uh, actually no courses about that. Uh, and this is my main topic of research. So it was great even for me for uh, sharing information um, and even inputs about that to students that are not my students and that are not just from US or Rome, but they are really international students. Thank you. And I love how you're talking about, I mean, obviously like our, our end goal is to enhance our students' learning, but I love to hear you talking about how um, valuable it was for you as a faculty member as well, like creating this community with all of our campuses, enhancing your own, you know, professional experience and being able to talk with and learn from students uh, from other countries as well. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, since you've been talking about your collaboration with Francisca, I'm going to move over to Francisca, if you could share your experience. That would be great. Yeah, you. sure. Can you all hear me? I hope you can all hear me. Okay, so what led me to become involved in Temp, uh, Temple Global Connect? First of all, in general, I like to have one guest lecture per semester in all my classes I teach to give students a different perspective. And in early 2020, when I started teaching at TUJ, so Temple University of Japan, before it went online, I talked with my supervisors very generally about guest lectures and their response was positive but we didn't make concrete decisions at that point. So in fall 2020, my supervisors emailed me and uh, they told me contacts with TU Rome had been established. So if I, they told me if I was interested, I could just browse the TU Rome faculty page and send me a link so I could respond what faculty members might be good candidates for 
guest lectures and I browse the TU Rome faculty page, the political science department as I'm in political science. And that's how I found uh, Marta Bordignon and also uh, Lorenzo Vinelli, who is not here today. And uh, those were the two specialists. I emailed my supervisors back uh, about, um, uh, can you connect me with those two people? And they responded immediately and established um, contact uh, to them with, uh, for me. So um, Marta emailed me and also Lorenzo emailed me. So this is how it all started, how we all established contact. And that was really a great addition for me, as Marta said, um, in an asynchronous format and also a synchronous format with Marta, which was great. And my students were very positive about, especially about the live interaction. So that was a great experience. And I think Susanna briefly mentioned at the beginning, the Google form. Um, after the first uh, uh, semester, I collaborated with Marta and um, I filled out the form about my experience and also indicated I was looking for another uh, candidate who could talk about global social movements in my class. Um, and by that, I found a person from um, main campus, from Temple main campus, uh, who is uh, Professor Jason Delgandio, who would then talk about that in my um, next class. So I could even establish more connections after the first semester. Thank you very much. Wonderful, thank you. And um, I wanted, oh gosh, I just lost my thought. I was um, going to say something about your um, expanded connections with, um, with Jason on social movements, but I've lost my train of thought. So I will come back to it, but thank you for sharing your experience. I'll remember it as soon as we move on. And I'm gonna move over to Melissa. Um, so I know you've had, um, you're getting ready for a, an interdisciplinary collaboration through the program too. Can you talk a little bit about how you became involved in the program um, and um, how you use the connection to support your teaching? Sure, good morning everyone, or good evening, depending on where you are. So um, I was trying to think of the year because, you know, 2020 has become a blur, but I actually started with the Global Connect in 2020 um, through Mary Conran, of course, and I believe, Marta, we had actually some early communications as well. Um, and so in 2020, I got started um, communicating with faculty about, um, I teach business communications here on main campus and wanted to know about international business communication. So that started with a couple of conversations, um, but my my interest and my entry comes from my dual background in writing. So a lot of my practical experience is in business writing, but I'm actually a creative writer and that's my first world. So it's, you know, it's a little challenging to marry those worlds often in the business school. Um, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to do that. Um, also as a creative writer and an introvert, um, you know, I often realize that my world gets too small. So I thought this would be a great way um, to reach out and, and get to know folks and get to um, use that experience to help my students. So the most immediate thing I'm doing now um, uh, is, well, I, I, I use the, um, the experience to in my classroom simply by, it just broadens my thinking. So I begin my classes now with a little bit more open discussion to engage the students. And I, I really get, because they're, they're quite international, I get to see where they come from, but I also get to see the impact um, from their background, culturally, geographically, um, the impact that it has on their learning as well as how I teach. So those discussions happen, you know, a few minutes before class. Um, folks are there before me waiting to have these discussions. They're saying after class when I'm trying to get out sometimes. Um, and, and it's actually carried over to the students um, broadening their discussions with one another. Um, so I, I, I use this and I do a cultural communications assignment where they get to pick a country um, and it's, you know, they have to know the religion, they have to know, um, you know, the president, they have to know, you know, um, the order of just um, business in general. And so they get this, this, um, this full scope that we get to discuss further. What I'm doing most immediately with Temple Rome is a collaboration um, that's uh, um, with Dr. Tuxkala, if I'm, if I'm pronouncing that right, um, who is absolutely wonderful. We've had great uh, communications this semester. I'm going to be um, facilitating a workshop with her art history course, um, her art history class, which is focusing on the Baroque period. Um, so her students have done some writing and, and I think I like to think of this as a collaboration. I'm facilitating it, but I'm certainly going to use her expertise um, in this collaboration and it's happening November 23rd. So coming up right away, which I'm really excited about. And a great example of, of how we can cross disciplines to um, enhance our students' 
learning and thinking about intercultural communication um, and its relationship to art history, which is very important. So thank you for that. Um, before we get to our next question for the panelists, I also, um, we were supposed to have the chair of the Italian department, Christina Gragnani here today, and she was going to talk a little bit about one of the other precedents for this program, which was that uh, last Last fall and fall 2020, the Italian department in um, at main campus in Rome collaborated um, to collect some what we called cultural labs um, recordings uh, that were made on the Rome campus that were then used in main campus classes. So fortunately, we have um, Professor Carmelo Galati here um, and can talk a little bit about how the Italian department used those cultural labs. Absolutely. Um, actually, um, I don't know if, if I'm able to uh, screen share for just one second. I'm, I'm just addicted to screen sharing. So if not, it's, it's not a problem. Um, you should be able to. Yeah. Oh, okay. Awesome. Um, so yeah, it was a, um, of course, um, because of the pandemic um, in uh, fall of 2020, unfortunately, the Temple Room campus uh, was not open. And that, of course, um, not only affected uh, the faculty and staff there, but definitely also our students who were hoping uh, to have the experience of studying abroad. Um, so we were fortunate enough uh, in our long collaboration uh, with the faculty and with the Dean uh, in Rome, and of course uh, with uh, Mary Conran to in some ways really bring uh, Temple Rome and the Temple Rome experience to students um during uh the pandemic uh and we actually did it in a, a couple of ways the first one um as uh, suzanne mentioned was with our uh italian cultural labs um which of course um we then called a taste of uh temple rome uh and in this um in these videos um we sort of have all of the uh faculty of italian uh provide uh some um, explanation or, well, specifically with culture. Uh, here, for example, we have buying food at the local market um, with, um, with Daniela. We have uh, Francesca Devona, who um, had a video on Italian through music. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we have uh, Bruno, um, who uh, is providing um, a uh, lectures uh, and um, information on Italian fashion, which uh, students in, um, especially in 1002, which focus on fashion, were then able to, uh, of course, use uh, Bruno's uh, video. Um, and of course, you know, we uh, provide, for example, this was for my class, so um, we opted for an Italian one, uh, buying food at the local market, uh, and there is also an assessment that faculty created to ensure that students were not only watching a video, but we're really uh, interacting with it. Uh, the other um, part of the experience Temple Rome, or a taste of Temple Rome, sorry, uh, was the uh, available support uh, that uh, we had um, in the fall and the spring. And we actually are continuing to do this, um, so we are very fortunate. Um, where we have Italian faculty who um, throughout the week uh, will uh, meet with students uh, on Zoom as language coaches uh, and also conversation partners. Uh, and of course, uh, we are very grateful to them because uh, for this, uh, of course, because of the uh, time differences, a lot of them, of course, uh, connect late at night uh, to ensure that students who are here in Philadelphia um, can have that opportunity um, to, to practice Italian with them. Um, so that is another one that we're doing. And then, of course, we've also had uh, the opportunity uh, to invite um, Italian faculty within our classes, uh, which uh, we call the Zoom bombings, of course. Uh, and I had uh, the pleasure of having Francesca Devona uh, come into our class. Uh, again, this is in a 1001 uh, course. Um, and it was a, a great experience uh, for, for my students um, because they had the opportunity to, at least in this lesson, to practice and reinforce uh, their um, 
formulations of questions and formulating questions using, uh, as you can see here, interrogative expressions. Um, and we had designed an entire activity on Francesca's visit. Uh, the wonderful thing, of course, was that after they had asked questions or prepared questions, the conversation really flowed naturally um, with Francesca. So students really uh, were able to engage um, with, uh, with her and with the activity. And then the last thing uh, also with it is that um, our collaboration, of course, sort of uh, has ventured into other areas. Um, at Temple, at least in any time program, we are uh, finishing our publication of our own open source textbook uh, for students in the 1001 and 1002 level. And we just recently received a grant from um, Pennsylvania Education um, and with that, we are now we we are actually having uh, members of Temple Rome create videos with students who are studying there that we will incorporate into our textbook. So again, just the amazing collaborations that we've had, and just to see how it's evolving um, because of the global reach as well. Thank you so much. What a great overview of an examples that you're providing for ways that we can pull in, you know, even asynchronous learning mm -hmm. to be able to use of, make use of on-demand videos, a great way to help us get around sometimes the time difference challenges, but also to be able to engage students in discussion about those videos. That, so it feels more like, a, you know, a live event and can have the energy of that. And those, um, those teaching partner, that teaching partner, program is really amazing. So thank you so much for sharing those examples. And that actually provides a really great transition into the next question, since you've given us some advice about how to implement um, these kinds of things in our classroom. I wanted to ask the panelists, based on your experience, if you have um, any advice for others um, to share about implementing something like this in your classroom. So again, I'm going to go to Ralph first, because I know you have to leave in just a minute. Well, the, um, you know, it's, it's primarily with in my classes and also with the teach-ins and uh, I'm putting out um, feelers already, for example, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the classes I'm teaching next semester, uh, uh, again, I'll be doing my Descent in America and Cold War Culture in Europe and Global Terrorism, uh, Cold War Culture in the United States. But one of the things that's quite interesting is to get uh, people, you know, for, uh, say from Temple Rome, for example, or from Temple Japan to talk in one of the classes about how um, U.S. culture during the Cold War had an influence in, what, in either Italy or in Japan. And it did have a, a huge influence. And that shows that... Um, it, it, it kind of one of the things that I emphasize in that class is that with, with the Cold War is that the Cold War didn't come to an end because of the stockpile of hydrogen bombs that the United States and the Soviet Union had. It really came to an end because of soft power. And this was the influence that was going back and forth between the West and the East during that time. And so it's um, a, a very interesting avenue to pursue when you have, um, you know, people from other places talk about how this influence and, and you know, impacted them. And uh, one can do this, you know, live via Zoom in the classroom, but also the, I like the idea of having people, especially, for example, with Temple Japan, um, the time difference is difficult to get somebody from Temple Japan to be collaborating live with your class here on main campus, but uh, sharing, you know, short videos can be constructed that can be shown in the classrooms too. So. Absolutely, that's great, thank you. Okay, um, Marta, any advice that you have to share? Yes, Suzanne, just adding to what Ralph was saying, um, I think that uh, my, my big and unique advice to the other ones is definitely to be part of this program because um, as far as my experience was, uh, I can tell you that speaking with students, uh, again, with not my, my similar background, my same background, and even with, speak with students that 
uh, can be even not US students, uh, was definitely uh, great. I mean, it was so interesting even to hear about your perception of a topic as business and human rights. So uh, Ralph was saying uh, and giving the example about Cold War. Uh, business and human rights is a topic that is not so much well known uh, in Europe for sure. So it's not easy for, for example, to speak about that, uh, speak about human rights violations committed by enterprises in Italy uh, or in some other uh, European countries. So uh, it, it's not easy to, uh, easy to speak about that even when, with my uh, students here at Temple Rome. But it was great because uh, they asked me, for example, or maybe Francisca uh, even uh, rem remember about the, the questions that they asked me during the live session. Uh, it was great because they asked me about aspects that maybe are not so much covered uh, about the, this topic and maybe because they had a different perception uh, about um, how much it, it may be huge, the uh, violations committed by an enterprise. And even because they, they are not political science students, so they have another kind of background, they have another kind of even personal and only I mean academic uh, background so my advice is definitely to be part of the program uh, especially because you had the chance to speak with people that otherwise like in my case with Francisca uh, otherwise you have no chance to, sp to speak with or to collab collaborate with wonderful thank you and Francisca I remember Ralph has, has to drop off to go teach thank you Ralph yeah, I just want to throw out another thing, too, is one of the things that I always tell my students when I'm doing a study abroad course or when I was at Temple Rome, I would often ask the students in class, you know, once a week at least, what are you experiencing here? Not just about the academic stuff, but how are you looking at the United States from the perspective of Italy, for example? And I think that's one of the things that we always need to emphasize is that Every student should spend some time abroad and make these global connections because they learn a lot more about themselves just in doing that, not just about the country or the history or the political politics of it all. They learn about themselves. Absolutely. <laughs> On that note, mic drop. Um, <laughs> that's so true. And um, I, I hope that this program will will encourage students to want to take the next step and study abroad. But we also know that for some students, they may never really have, have access to it for various reasons, whether it's responsibility at home or financial restrictions, um, though we have a lot of scholarships. For some students, it can still remain out of reach. So this program can also help them have access to some international learning if they cannot travel. So, but we do hope it will pique their interest in, in doing so. Uh, Francisca, I remembered the thing I was I was thinking of um, is, is that um, you know you took the initiative to ask your supervisors as an adjunct, right, to to make these connections and and go look at the Rome set website and find someone. But one of the things with with we wanted to accomplish with this program was reaching out to faculty who may not take the initiative to do it and say, hey, you know what, this is available. We're making it easy for you. So thank you for taking the initiative to do it and for sticking with us in this program. Do you have any advice to share? Thank you very much, Susanna. Yeah, um, um, I would totally agree with uh, Marta. If you're considering to participate in the program, I would certainly recommend participating. And if I would, um, well, uh, would recommend uh, two points to other people uh, participating or thinking about it, it would be planning and time. The first one is planning. I would uh, recommend to plan ahead with the guest speaker like I did with Marta, for example. So if you have a live lecture on Zoom, for example, agree on three potential classes that your guest speaker could visit for a presentation or discussion. And the other side, of course, plan ahead with students. In my first class, what I do, I announce the guest lecture or the discussion and give the class the three potential dates the speaker has chosen and give the class um, a Google document for which is accessible for a week where they have to mark which day works best for them. And then I get back in touch with the speaker about the date for the live interaction. So planning would be one thing. And the other thing that uh, Ralph also discussed would be um, time, time difference. We have to compensate for time differences maybe 
with recorded lectures or shift a class to a different time for live interaction. I also did that or have a recorded lecture and a Canvas discussion, for example. And for Canvas discussions, I found that it's good to have fixed dates that you discuss with your speaker and the class. When should they post to Canvas? When can students ask questions? For example, students can post questions today, November 19 until midnight, and then the speaker will answer between November 25 and November 30. So um, this is what I found. Um, and also time during live interaction, I would recommend to make it very clear to students in advance that it's not mandatory to stay longer than the class time because I felt that some live discussions took a very long time and um, maybe students uh, well feel uncomfortable to, to go offline after class time, even if, if, there's still, if there's still a discussion going on. So um, planning and time would be two things that I would recommend to think about. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Really important to respect those boundaries, right, for ourselves and, and our students too. Um, Melissa, what advice would you like to share? Um, so, I mean, I think Ralph and Francesca said most of it, but um, I think the main thing is just reaching out. Um, definitely. So it's a dual benefit for the faculty as well as for the faculty to gain for students. So just that initial reaching out is great. Um, one of the things I always like to do, I give several talks and lectures and it seems like, oh, if you give the same talk, you know, every year, you've, you've nailed it. That's all you need to know. But it's really important to understand um, your audience. And in this case, the students. Um, so I just had a meeting yesterday and, and wrapping up this, this, the logistics for this talk, um, this collaboration on November 23rd. And I really wanted to know, even though the class size is small, I really wanted to know about the students, um, you know, what their experiences are. And it was, it was a fantastic question because it ended up being that there was a graduate student, you know, um, a student from this background, a student with a disability, a student, and it it it, it was just such a, a broad um, scope of of learning from these students. One was a freshman, and so we went from freshman to a thirty year old graduate student, um, and so that gave me you know more discussion and how I can best. Um, serve the student, anticipate their needs, um, and how I could incorporate them in the workshop rather than me just lecturing. So it's really just the communication, starting out that initial communication to reach out and then continuing that communication um, to see how I can be of use to um, that, that art history Rome class and in exchange, you know, um, have the guest speaker for my future class as well. That's so great. And thank you for pointing it out, out. It's so important to think about who's in our classroom. And that's one of the great advantages of being able to collaborate across campuses. Um, and remembering too, we also have um, a lot of uh, cultural diversity within our classrooms, you know, here on main campus or, or um, you know, regardless of where you're teaching. And so it's always important to be thinking about um, what your what perspectives uh, your students can bring to the table and alter our, our teaching accordingly. We were talking about that a lot in the intercultural learning uh, workshop that we did on Tuesday um, that we hope to revisit. So I know Dana is making our breakout rooms. We're going to hop in and, and talk to each other um, about what ideas we have um, for that. And I know, um, some of the others of you may have already implemented some, some similar types of thing, things in your class. I know Rob Huber has. We recently did an article on the program um, that included um, Rob's collaboration with Deanna McDonald at TUJ. So I know we have some other experience in the room. I hope you'll all share that in the breakouts. And Dana, are you ready for me to turn it over to you? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So like Suzanne said, um, oh, Francisca asked if you can share the article. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, we would like to give you a chance just to kind of brainstorm together. So we're going to split you up into two breakout rooms. Um, we'll have a couple of folks who are here to think about what you can do in your classes, paired up with a couple of folks who have done this kind of thing. And Carmelo, we're using you as an honorary panelist, which I hope is okay, since you've had some experience with this. So um, I put a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, what teaching in class planning problem are you trying to solve with Global Connect? Uh, what ideas do you have for using Temple Global Connect? And what questions do you have or challenges do you anticipate? So um, we're hoping you can use these breakout rooms as an opportunity just to kind of um, brainstorm and strategize. Even if you're just here to learn more and you're kind of just starting to think about what you could do in your classes, this is a chance to kind of uh, chew it over a bit with some folks who have used the program. So 
Um, does anybody have any questions before we go into breakout rooms for a, for a little bit here? Okay. How much time do we have? Oh, go ahead, Francisca. Uh, should we discuss all three questions or uh, is it, yeah, should we? <laughs> um, sure, it's kind of, they're kind of a starting place. So if, if um, the folks who are here to learn and to kind of think about your classes and you're starting to think about using the program, if you already have something in mind and you have burning questions, <laughs> then you can feel free to launch right into um, you know, trying to get some feedback and trying to kind of help formulate and strategy, you know, formulate your plan and strategize. Um, for those of you that are just kind of starting to think, you can use these questions as a jumping off point. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Melissa. Well, oh, I'm, I'm not sure if this is the case, but I know often when I do breakouts and I do a chat before the breakout, the questions don't carry over. So just in case I copied and pasted, and I'm not sure if other folks might want to do that. Oh, good idea. Right. That's a great idea. Thank you, Melissa. Um, How so much time do we have, Dana? Dana? Uh, we have 20 minutes for this, so we'll check in. Suzanne and I will check in uh, with you a couple times just to see if you're kind of ready to come back to the main room and we can share ideas or if you need a little bit more time. So, um, yeah, if there are no more questions, right. So if a couple folks, let's see, Melissa, you have copy and pasted and maybe Carmelo or Marta, you can copy those questions as well. Great. OK, Carmelo's done that. OK, great. So I'm going to go ahead and open these rooms. OK. I'm just noticing it's almost 8.55, so maybe we could do 15 minutes just so we can report back. Sure, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Rob, do you see your room? Did you step away for a minute? maybe stepped away. I'm going to stop recording. Oh, yeah. Uh, sure. Let me just, I want to pull up the Canvas site. That's going to take me a second. Um, Sherry also, just while Suzanne is doing that, I think you should do a teach-in on misinformation and disinformation. I think that would be a great topic these days. I Yeah, I mean, as long as one time. I can't believe the commitment he has made to doing that. Oh, it is incredible. Friday. That's crazy. I mean, not crazy. It's yeah. wonderful, but like, wow. It is really wonderful. Always great speakers, great topics. Yeah, it's really amazing. You know, he's the coolest and he's done faculty led programs for us. He's taught in Rome. He's like always doing something. His energy is just impressive. And the students love him, obviously. He's won so many teaching awards. Um, okay, so I'm gonna share my screen just so I can show you kind of where to find the Global Connect um, program information. So we do have a website now that is um, on the, the Global Teach website that we've been using for um, our International Education Week events. So we can, um, I think I actually dropped that link in the in the chat earlier, but we can send that again. So here's an overview of the program. And then I'm hoping also to build this up with more uh, stories and experiences from faculty who have participated, a link to that article that I mentioned. And then you can just click here to request a new connection. We've already gotten two for the next spring semester. So I'm excited about that. Um, I may end up extending this deadline just a little bit so we can get an email out again for spring, but currently is set for December 1st, just to give us time for to make your connection and so that you can really think, you know, in planning ahead for the future terms. Um, you'll notice also there's a, an option for future terms on here. Um, you know, the further ahead we can plan, you know, perhaps you can even um, be able to coordinate uh, class times if that's, I know there are a lot of uh, hurdles to, to making that happen potentially, but if we know further out that you're interested in collaborating, then it's possible to maybe, um, find better alignment in the future. So you just fill out your information, um, your school or college, your department, your campus. You can tell us whether or not you have a preference for where your collaborator is from. You can take a look at the courses offered on the overseas campuses and make a request for a specific, uh, a specific course. Or you can just, like I said, tell us what you're interested in doing and we will try to find some connections for you. Tell us when your class is meeting, what the format is, and then any other information uh, that might be helpful. 
Um, and then you can also let us know if you're interested in being included in our searchable database, which is a very sophisticated Google sheet. Um, so basically, if you select yes, then I will put your information into the public facing Google Sheet or the faculty facing Google Sheet, and that's embedded in the Canvas site so that you can actually go on and, and see who else is looking. So um, as we grow that platform and the Canvas site, that will become a more useful thing than it is right now. Um, so I'm hoping to be able to build up that community. And that was one of the things that I wanted to put forward to the group today and um, get your feedback for what you think might be most useful to all of you. Um, and I'll take a look at that in a minute, but I did want to mention that Global Programs, who is another uh, another office within the Office of International Affairs, uh, creates connections for faculty with a lot of our international partners, so our exchange partners beyond beyond our um, Temple campuses. So if you're interested in connecting with another one of our international partners, you can just check yes here. And I will pass your information on to global programs and they can help you connect there. So again, this is just about making it easier. We just wanted a place for people to say, this is what I want to do. And then, you know, there's so many units and so many people, who do I contact to do what I want to do? You just fill out this form and we will, we will help to make that easier for you. So we have this Canvas site and I can share, this is a, a self-enroll. Self-enroll. So if you're interested in self-enrolling, we'll drop that into the chat. You can do that here. And it's just set up as a simple Canvas course. Unfortunately, I can't, um, I want it to just be like a community. It's set up to be teachers and students, which is super weird, but there isn't really a good workaround for that right now. So <laughs> we're all just community members. You can link here to the database. So what, if you click yes on that box, you show up here in our fancy spreadsheet. Now it's not loading for me. The database doesn't exist, but you can create it now. Okay, I have some troubleshooting to do there. Um, last time I checked that was showing up. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but I'm gonna troubleshoot that later today. Um, but essentially you would see yourself or other faculty members in a list there and you could just reach out to folks directly. You can complete the request form to make a new connection. And then we have links here to resources, um, articles, uh, other resources, and of course the sessions at the CAT, which are um, the best resource for, for connecting with others and, um, and thinking through these. You can even sign up for consultations and things like that at the CAT. So all these great resources. Um, what it is right now basically is, is an internal website for you to click on things. Um, what I would like for it to be is more of a community where we can continue these discussions. And so I don't know if Canvas is the best platform for that or if everyone would just like to have a Facebook group or some other platform. So I wanted to, if you're willing to think about this with me, I would love for all of your feedback on either, you know, you know, would you be willing to engage in discussions on Canvas platform? You're all logging into that every day anyway, and you could just be right there where all your classes are. Um, or do you think that there's another platform that would be more useful to you? Um, I just put the link to the database in the chat there just so that uh, Thank you. folks can see what it looks like. Yeah. Um, to, to Suzanne's question, I think um, for, uh, also uh, Francisca says uh, definitely Canvas uh, over Facebook. <laughs> 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 Is that <I've> become <laughs> anti-Facebook? Uh, 